Hey guys, great to see you. Uh, welcome back to Beyond Local, your next level digital podcast. Uh, we're here with our second installment and we're really excited today because I think we're talking about a topic that is pertinent to just about any business out there and it's really the core and the fuel of any company. And for those that understand the, the importance of it, I, I think that's important. So we're, we're actually talking about workplace culture today. Um, as you guys might know, I'm Chris Nash, the president of LSEO, a full service digital marketing agency. This is Steve Blackburn. He's LSEO's director of operations. Um, and just looking back over the last few months at this point, I mean, Steve's been with the company almost eight months. Feels like he's been there for years. And I say that in the, in the most positive of ways. When we were thinking about our culture, thinking about the direction of the business, we actually recruited Steve to, to come in on, on the client services side. But immediately, he started to play a role on the operational side, thinking about the culture, thinking about the employees, thinking about getting connected to the core of the company to really make a better engine to serve every, every element of it. And if it, doesn't, if it doesn't start internally, I don't think it goes external. So um, in this, you know, in general for the Beyond Local podcast, the goal here is really to dig into issues that affect businesses. Obviously, we, we, have, we have a focus connected to, to anything digital and digital marketing, but we wanted to back up just one step and talk about the broader implications. And I think if you start with culture, that's pertinent, like we said, to almost any organization. So, uh, Steve, I would love to start this out because you wrote a piece called The Ultimate Guide to Building a, a Great Workplace Culture. I'd love to start out talking about the importance of that and in general let's 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 understand why we should even be talking about culture first at the business level all right well Chris thanks for having me today um, you know I'm obviously happy to come talk about something that I wrote and something that means so much to me and uh, you know thanks for for recruiting me to part of the team I tried to get to LSEO for for quite some time and I know you tried to get me and uh, you know the stars just aligned and We're here I am. About it. <laughs> so you know, I did write a piece on on workplace culture, and uh, it's on our website. If you guys want to read it, I will uh, warn you, it is nine thousand words, so it's uh, <laughs> it's not your typical five hundred word blog piece. But that's because it's so darn important. You know, a lot of times people just say, "Hey, we're a business. Shouldn't we just worry about goals and deliverables?" Well, this is all about the deliverables. I mean, getting the perfect workplace culture is deliverables. So. The reason for that is you need the best people. The best people are going to be the best workers. The best workers are going to, you know, give the client the best deliverables. How do you get the best people? Well, you recruit them. Listen, if we 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 read the jobs market every, you know, every month it comes out, there are actually more jobs available than people that can take them. So, this is not a market where you know people are out actively searching for jobs, you know, and hopefully it it, it stays that way. You know, sure. the stock market's, meow. but you know, hopefully it stays that way. But with that being said, you know, it's competitive out there. I mean, heck, you know, you had to recruit me, and it wasn't like I could just overnight be like, hey, I'd love to join, even though in my heart of hearts I knew it was the right thing. <laughs> but the the way you do it is, you know, you go out, you create the best place to work, you know, to to save. To save and, and grow your client base, you create raving fans. For well, it's sure. the same thing. You know, I came to LSEO because I knew some of the people that worked here, and they were like, hey, man, we're starting to build something really special there. So then I came on, and I'd like to think that I helped take it to the next level. Um, I can concur. You know, and, and one of the things is just, you know, happy people do better work. Happy people stay somewhere longer. That builds that brand loyalty. And then I, I think of, you know, Richard Branson. I mean, a, a gentleman who, who one would say is very, you know, has a great business acumen, made himself a heck, of a, lot, a heck of a lot of money. And, uh, but he, he had the unconventional thinking that, you know, most businesses think clients come first. And clients are important, but his thinking was employees come first. Because if you, as the president of LSEO, take care of me, the employee at LSEO, and, and the rest of our employees, well, we'll take care of your clients. So, you know, it's that domino effect. You know, you control the things that you can control. You can control the office, the mm -hmm. office culture, the people that work for you. And then in turn, they'll take care of your clients. I think we read that piece recently, almost at the same time, that talked about Netflix. And they just made a really, like, simple, bold statement. And the, the comment was, it's all about the people. And that... I think that's directly in line with the thinking behind the fact. I mean, they have obviously, in recent years, changed their model, built an unbelievable company, taken the, the media industry by storm. 
And, and on, the, on the flip side of that, you go, well, what process did they use to put that in place? And in, in turn, they're coming back and saying, listen, it's all about the people and the people actually are what created the opportunity, created the process, creating the structure, et cetera, to, to actually foster the environment to create success. So, um, well, that's, so we've, I think we've established at this point that culture, I don't, I don't think most people would argue that it's not important. I do think some people put a bigger focus on mm-hmm. it than others, but given if, if we sort of make the assumption that culture is an important component to most businesses, I think the next logical question is, how do you foster a better environment? How do you build a better culture? So walk us through some of the things you talked about in your piece. All right, well, like I said, um, you know, you and I have had numerous conversations on this and I'm very glad to have had them with you. Uh, having someone in the office who cares about culture as much as I do is is really great, especially when they're the president of the company. So, <laughs> you know, when you want something, you go to the president. So um, we wanted a great culture and you and I both played sports growing up and I kind of look at business a lot of the same way I look at sports. So what you would do, you put together a business plan. You know, in this case, it's a plan around company culture. Well, sports are the same thing. You know, you de- develop a playbook and you figure out, you know, hey, here's our opponent's weaknesses, here's their strengths, and how, how are we gonna formulate a g- game plan to get ahead of them? Business is the same way, you know, culture's the same way. So what we did was we came up with kind of like a mission statement, some core values, purpose, things like that. I mean, you walk upstairs, they're plastered on our wall. And it's not just some propaganda that we don't, you know, that we don't live by, that's, I walk in every day and I'm proud to work at LSEO. Give, it, give us an example one, because I think that we, uh, well, I'll suggest one. It's client success is our success. That, Correct. That's one of the tenants that we have on our wall. And, you know, it's if we come in and we believe that that's part of what we're doing every day and we can glance at that wall as we walk in the office, it just changes the thinking, I think, when you step in the door. Absolutely. And, and one of the biggest things is getting the people to be in the right seats. You know, I mean... We need to hire people that believe in those values that, that, that we talk about, you know, because I don't want people who are there just to collect a paycheck. And I mean, not that we have any upstairs, but, you know, we have people that, that come in every day, um, you know, under promise over deliver is another one that we have on there. And I love that one because, you know, I've worked for some organizations in the past or, you know, there's, I, I've been sold, uh, a book of goods that wasn't always what sure. it was. Oh, well, from- we, we, we've all been there, whether it's products you're buying off the shelf with a bulleted list of amazing you know, benefits to it, and then you actually open up the box and it's nowhere near right. that, that level of awesome. Right, so, but I love that our team, you know, I, I from time to time still hop on a client call, um, and they're like, my goodness, I knew that you guys were good, but you know, I, when I'm looking and showing them 30 and 40% improvements month over month over month, now, we don't get on the phone with them and tell them that that's going to happen. We hope it does, but, but you know. <laughs> it doesn't always happen yes, either. So yes, <laughs> yes, yes. We work in an industry that sometimes you can't control that. But at the same time, we under-promise, over-deliver, always go the extra mile. And you know what? Then we re- reward our people for their hard work, you know? And one of my favorite things that we do is the ongoing development of the team, you know, whether it's uh, leadership training or, you know, making sure that the whole squad gets certified in maybe areas that aren't necessarily what they work on every day. Which, by the way, is another one of our core values. So on the wall, we have personal and professional development is there. And that really is about the internal team and the team that is that is actually carrying out the work. Um, so we're investing it. I, I think we'll talk about that, though, in, in the next question. But give me, give me a, a, a more of a sense of what you can specifically do to actually uh, build, build the, the right kind of culture. Do you have uh, other bullets that, that were in the piece? Uh, yeah, so you know, some of them are just, you know, again, making sure that you get the right people there, making sure that everybody's got the alignment on, on what we're doing, you know, empower your people to, to not only succeed, but also to fail because, you know, you have to build a culture where your employees are, are willing and feel the, the sense that they're able to go the extra mile and they're going to stumble along the way. That and word empowerment, I think, is a big deal. I think if you re- truly empower your people, give them the resource to succeed, now you're giving them an opportunity to own something too, which naturally is another one of our core values, is extreme accountability. Right. Um, you, you know, but as I said, they're also gonna fail. So, you know, from time to time, they're going to stumble, but we learn from that as an organization. And, you know, it's uh, like Thomas, Ed- Thomas Edison, you know, he didn't, 
He did not not figure out how to make the light bulb. He found, you know, a th I don't know the exact number, but a thousand ways not to make the light bulb. <laughs> you know, so, so, but another thing that I think that we do a great job of um, is, you know, I really enjoy the, and, and I didn't bring this on some of our other team members, the community outreach that we're doing, right. whether it's, you know, with the soup kitchen or some other places. Um, and, you know, we're we're a really proud group. You know, I've got our LSEO swag on, but I wear this, you know, not because we're doing a podcast, but, well, hey, it's, it's a nice shirt. And, <laughs> and B, because I'm proud as heck to work here, you know, and uh, I know we work hard, but we like to play hard and we celebrate our successes. Um, you know, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm happy to be I think that does here. instill a certain sense of pride, too, yeah. and then you, you want to come in and feel proud where you work. And I have to say, like, I don't know, when I talk to people, generally speaking, about their work, I, so I, I feel like 60 to 70% of people will tell you they don't like their job. And that just seems crazy to me. Like I, I love what I do. I love coming to the work. Um, that doesn't mean every single day I, I wouldn't prefer to be on a beach on some days, but I actually really enjoy what we do. I enjoy the kind of work we carry and I, I actually enjoy the environment and the culture. So that's a testament to the, the things that you've done. So let's, let's actually talk about some of the legit concrete changes we've made at LSEO specifically, I mean, obviously we've talked about our purpose and values wall. Mm -hmm. That's really important. But it shouldn't just be something you stick up there. What are some of the actual internal things that you've been able to do at work that, that have changed the culture? All right, and, all and right. The so, so you know me, the, the audience might not. And uh, well, I don't think this will be the only time. What did I say when you came in? I was worried. I made a comment about you. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's hilariously off base at this point. Uh, so Mr. Nash, as I called you in all of my <laughs> interviews, yes, sir. Um, Nobody calls so, me Mr. Nash. So, Mr. Nash here was worried that I might be a bit too matter of fact to work oh, for that's our what it company. Was, yeah. So, um, <laughs> not the, the case. Yes, no. Um, I told you it was it was formal until it wasn't. So, one of the things that I like to do is, you know, let's take it back to grade school. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's not take our t t uh, ourselves too serious. So, the first week I was here, you know, you don't really know what you're doing the first week you start a new job. Right. But I had the client stuff on lockdown, which I told you I would. I was right. Um, <laughs> I did. So, so what I did was I started to look at, well, let me get to know my, my fellow employees. So I put together employee profiles and it was like 25 questions of, you know, what's your favorite food, yada, yada. You know, the, what, the, the what normal What would you stuff. bring in a desert island, I yeah, remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, yeah. yeah um, well, my favorite one was if, you, if, you were, if we were out at happy hour after work and Nash was buying, <laughs> what are you ordering? So, um, by the way, I still didn't get that. <laughs> Maybe, maybe later. Um, it'll be five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> but, you know, we did that. And then I went to, I mean, if, if that was juvenile, I really went first and, grade. But then, of course, you shared it with everyone. Well, yes, every yes. single week, we saw a new profile, so we got to digest every employee. Yes. And obviously, if you, if you have a big team, you should maybe think about doing that in team environments, Correct. et cetera. Correct. So. so then the next thing I did was show and tell which, you know, it was, that was awesome though. It was awesome. Um, so what we got to do, I got a little window into every employee, you know, and, and especially um, through our, our leadership training, we learned the difference between introverts and extroverts. You know, I mean, we, we probably knew what those words meant, but we really understood them. And we got a real like sight line into the soul of some of the more <laughs> introverted people. Well, it's just, it's just nice to know people on a more personal level. Obviously you have to be careful you know, there, there's always a balance between being friends and having a professional mm -hmm. relationship, and you have to toe that line really carefully, particularly as it relates to culture. But actually understanding the way people operate, and then when you're asking them for something, understanding how they're going to interpret that and the kind of person they are and their, their own interests and commitments make a big difference when you're working next to somebody. Right, right. Um, I couldn't agree more, and, you know, that's why... I, I really enjoy the next piece that we're doing, well, we'll have one tomorrow, is we do the lunch and learn. So so uh, what I do, or uh, what we do, is we order pizza every other Friday, and then members of our team stand up and give a presentation about what their job here in the company is, so that you know it helps with cross-training, and it helps you know Department A know what Department B, what Department C do, so that we're all you know one cohesive unit. Um, you know, and I just, I'm real big on the, the team building activities. If you guys want to see more of that, you know, specific things that Steve's done, obviously check out the piece. But just one final thing here. I'd love, because you touched on it a couple times. Talk to me about the leadership training that we've gone through and how that's actually impacted the team and, and the company overall. Well, I, I thought the leadership training was fantastic to, to start with. You know, I'm going to throw a little one out here. Matt Salchik, great guy, um, you know, has, has, has done, done wonders for us. Um, and 
you know, this will be a little bit of an inside joke, but I can now walk into the office at any day and start saying, Nash, my golf ball is this, my <laughs> rock is this, you know, I've got some sand going on in my life, and you'll know what I mean, you know, um, and we want everyone else to know as well. But the, uh, the leadership training was great, you know, it really taught us how to communicate, um, you know, with, again, the E's versus the I's, because you and I are both, you know, extroverted people, um, but I had to not relearn, but kind of be more cognizant of how I speak with more introverted people because, right. you know, maybe they don't take my my uh, my methods and they don't digest it the same way that, say, someone like yourself would. For sure. But the leadership training's been great and we're still doing it and it has helped me become not only a better worker, but just a better person, you know? Yeah. And, and Chris Jones, who, you know, isn't here with us during this one, but uh, I really need to thank him personally because through him putting money and resources into you know our ongoing development he's just made me a better employee for lseo and just a, a bet a better man whether it's at home at work just in life in general that's the one thing i really took from the all the training and we we did executive training and we put every single staff member through it as well and i this this went so far beyond just professional development it, if you thought about the what they were talking about and you applied it to your personal life and your personal goals and your your own fulfillment at home, just building a balance across those things. And one thing I love, I think we're big on it too. This, in my opinion, what runs through everything on you know that that we've talked about today is sort of this idea of emotional intelligence mm -hmm. and tapping into that, understanding what that means on an individual and a team level. And that, to me, what is what culture is really about. Um, so. Steve, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, no, like, thanks for having me. Like I said, we'd love for you to check this piece out um, on the LSEO blog. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Building a Great Workplace Culture. Uh, there are real tips and information in there about how you can do this in your own, or, your own organization. We have literally made enormous steps in, in bringing this to our own company, and it has changed our output, it, it, it's changed our productivity, at the same time, we're having more fun in the office, and mm -hmm. it's a better place to work at the same time. And I have to, I have to tip. I mean, I have to give Steve credit. We actually won best places to work in Northeastern Pennsylvania as a result of this, and we're really, really excited and proud about that. And that literally happened on the heels of all the work that you've done. So congratulations to that. Well, thank you. Um, but we're not stopping there. I'm going for best <laughs> places to work in the United States next. So thank you all. This is this has been Beyond Local, your next level digital podcast coming from Studio 16 South in the Accelerator. Thank you. Thank you.